nourishing maternal love in their hearts, whether or not they have given birth or not. Uh, we want to wish all women uh, a very special day today. Um, yes. Welcome to Peace Lutheran Church uh, on this sixth Sunday of Easter, where all people are invited into full participation of the church, regardless of race, ethnicity, sexual orientation, gender identity, gender expression, or physical or mental disability. We issue a very special welcome to anyone who is joining us on Zoom. Um, and uh, also to any visitors who are here this morning. We're really glad you're here. We hope you come back and worship with us again. Uh, we invite you to sign uh, our guest book, which is in the narthex, and to introduce yourself to either me or someone else in the congregation before you leave. Now, I do have a couple of announcements before we have council announcements. First of all, I have a confession to make. And that is that I have a really bad memory. And so when you come up to me uh, and I talk with you in the narthex and you tell me X, Y, or Z, guess what? I go away and I forget. And so someone uh, last week um, I, I, um, volunteered to uh, do the Spanish portion of our uh uh, Memorial Day um, Pentecost uh, Sunday sermon or um, it was worship and then I was so excited that I had this name and I like thought I had it imprinted in my mind and I went back to my office and I just went blank and so if you offered to do Spanish uh, last week come up and see me again and this time I have a pen and a post-it note so I'm going to write it down uh, thank you I don't think there's anybody else here who has any memory problems are there we all, we're all good? Yeah, okay. <laughs> I, I, one other request for um, Pentecost Sunday. Uh, we're going to uh, do the March of the Tongues of Fire, and uh, which represents the 12 tribes of Israel. We would like to have one member of uh, 12 families in peace who will be bringing up a red candle and placing it on the altar. So if, uh, if I haven't pinholed you on that already and you're interested in doing that, let me know. Uh, or you might get pinholed after church today uh, to see if you'd be willing to do that for us. I uh, want to also just remind you that we are going to have a new members class in June. We have not hammered out yet the date for that new members class, but we'll be letting you know very soon. So please um, uh, let me know if you'd like to be in that class. Um, and so now I want to invite council forward. I'm sorry if I took the wind out of your sails, but I know you have some other very important announcements to make. Good morning. Good morning. Happy Mother's Day. Okay, I do have some fairly important announcements to make. The May Congregational Meeting, as you probably all know, is scheduled for next Sunday after church at 1015. And there's several things that to talk about, and they're pretty darn important, so you should be there for that. Uh, Pentecost Sunday, May 28th, we'll start passing the offering plate through the, through the uh, pews. And uh, we also need communion assistance and ushers. And remember the Family Fun Day on June 3rd? Uh, check for opportunities to participate and volunteer. They're going to pass out uh, little door hangers to hang on people's doors to announce that this is happening, to draw the people in from our neighborhood. And also a special one, Barbara needs assistance. Barbara Zabowski needs assistance next Sunday at 8 o'clock with the coffee because Jackie's going to be on vacation, I assume. Okay, sometime before the end of the month then. Maybe you should see Barbara if you're, if you're willing to help and she can give you better information than I can. And don't forget to read the rest of the announcements. 
bring money. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Remembering our baptisms, we worship in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and one another. Gracious God, have mercy on us. We confess that we have turned from you and given ourselves into the power of sin. We are truly sorry and humbly repent. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things we have done and things we have failed to do. <coughs> and uphold us by your spirit so that we may live and serve you in newness of life through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. <laughs>
Almighty and ever-living God, you hold together all things in heaven and on earth. In your great mercy, receive the prayers of all your children and give to all the world the spirit of your truth and peace through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The New Testament reading is taken from the book of Acts, the 17th chapter, verses 22 through 31. Paul stood in front of the Areopagus and said, Athenians, I see how extremely religious you are in every way. For as I went through the city and looked carefully at the objects of your worship, I found among them an altar with the inscription to an unknown God. What therefore you worship as unknown, I proclaim to you, the God who made the world and everything in it, he who is Lord of heaven and earth, does not live in shrines made by human hands, nor is he served by human hands as though he needed anything, since he himself gives to all mortals life and breath and all things. From one ancestor he made all nations to inhabit the whole earth, and he allotted the times of their existence and the boundaries of the places where they would live, so that they would search for God and perhaps grope for him and find him, though indeed he is not far from each one of us. For in him we live and move and have our being, as, in, as even some of your own poets have said, for we too are his offspring. Since we are God's offspring, we ought not to think that the deity is like gold or silver or stone, an image formed by the art and imagination of mortals. While God has overlooked the times of human ignorance, now he commands all people everywhere to repent because he has fixed a day on which he will have the world judged in righteousness by a man whom he has appointed. And of this he has given assurance to all by raising him from the dead. The word of the Lord. Good morning. Good morning, Jeremiah. I thought I saw another little one over there. Ooh, okay. We have another little one here. But you're not a little one. You're a big one, right? You want to come out here in the aisle with me? So do you see this? Come staring. Hello. Hello. Let's go ask him what his name is. Hello, this is Jeremiah. Could you tell us your name? Isaiah. Say it again. Isaiah. Azel. 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 Uh, would you come up front with me and, and Jeremiah? Could you do that? Come here. You hold his hand, Jeremiah. He needs a, maybe he doesn't want it. He, he's independent. He's independent. Okay. So... Oh, it's so cool to have two children here. We're really glad to have you, Azel and Jeremiah. So um, I know that, that I know that you go to school, Jeremiah, he, and he's in first grade, going into second grade. Azel, do you go to school or daycare? I go to school. You do. Do you have a teacher? I have a teacher. Yeah, he has a teacher. Yeah. So so tell me, boys, what. What do your teachers say to you about what kind of boys you should be? I'm thinking of things like, do they tell you that you should study? Do they tell you that you should be 
um, kind? Do they tell you you should work hard? Is there anything else that they tell you? I bet I bet you have an idea, Jeremiah. What does your teacher tell you? Charlie says we do do math. What's that? Charlie says we do math. She wants you to do math. Okay, yeah, well, that's something you do in school. Yeah. That's, what, that's what teachers tell us, and then they also tell us to do reading, don't they? And I bet your teacher tells you to count. Does your teacher have you go one, two, three, four? Yeah. Because teachers do that because they want us to grow up to be the best that we can be. So we have another teacher, and his name is Jesus and I'm gonna hold this hand look at that Ooh, is that two he's got two fingers up here one two let me hold your hands for a minute so Jesus tells us that we not only should we be smart and studious and pay attention and be fair and be kind but really what Jesus tells us in the Bible and in our gospel reading today Jesus tells us to love and he tells us that if we love him, then he loves us, and the Father loves us, and the Father is God, and so God loves us because we love too. Who do you love? Do you love your mother? Yeah, cause it, and it's Mother's Day too. Do you love your mother? Yeah. How about your grandmother? Yeah. Do you love anybody else besides your mother? I bet a lot of people, yeah, and they love you too. So let's pray to God. Dear God, they're, they're helping us out. We'll, we'll start over. Dear God, help us to love and grow to be good and strong boys and smart and ones who love. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. And if Pastor Lynn can get up, oh, she will. Oh, oh, thank you, Jeremiah. Oh, come here, come here, Jeremiah. <laughs> thank you. Oops, there we go. And let's go back and find your mama. Here she is. There you go. Thank you for coming. The Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. John. Jesus said to the disciples, If you love me, you will keep my commandments, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. This is the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him, because he abides with you, and he will be in you. I will not leave you orphaned. I am coming to you. In a little while, the world will no longer see me, but you will see me. Because I live, you also will live. On that day, you will know that I am in my Father, and you in me, and I in you. They who have my commandments and keep them are those who love me. Those who love me will be loved by my Father, and I will love them and reveal myself to them. The Gospel of the Lord.
Gracious God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. <clears throat> if you have traveled very often on interstates, you may have noticed highway icons that lead wayward travelers like myself along our way. These icons have no words and just pictures. A bed represents... Right. Hotels, motels, lodging. Um, a rectangle with a squiggly tail represents... I can't hear you. I, 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 gas stations. <laughs> did I get did I get it wrong? Did you get it wrong? Okay, uh, and arrows point us all which ways, right? And then there is the question mark. Okay, the question mark that hangs loosely from an exit sign all by itself. This question mark really, really intrigues me. Is it marking the way for adventurers who don't know what it means and want to find out? Is it, is it a beacon of hope for confused and mixed up people like me who don't have a clue? Or is it just the way to the tourist information center where people can get their questions answered? As indeed it is. That is what it is. Have you seen those question marks? They're just floating in the air. It's like, what the heck are you? Well, it leads the way to a tourist information center. <clears throat> Apparently, people are wandering all over the interstate highways in need of direction, in need of someone to point the way. And the question mark is their icon, that symbol that testifies to the fact that they just don't know. The ancient Greeks dedicated a whole temple to what they didn't know, inscribing the words to an unknown God on the altar of a mysterious deity, as you heard today in the book of Acts. Their rich philosophical culture may have contributed to the homage they paid to a Godhead that was outside their orthodox belief in the 12 gods that who lived on Mount Olympus. Yet they were also hedging their bets, so to speak, acknowledging this divine presence that they knew nothing about. Were they to use the highway signs to label their beliefs, this one would have boasted a question mark hanging loosely from the altar that was dedicated to the unknown God. To his credit, the Apostle Paul did not jump the gun and tell these folks they were lost on the highway of faith. He didn't berate them for wasting their time bowing down to Zeus and his counterparts on the mountain. Nor did he swing to the other side of the pendulum and shrug his shoulders saying, so what? They've got their religion, we've got ours, live and let live. A true evangelist Paul avoided the traps we usually fall into when we're confronted with people who just don't know. Too often we forget where we came from ourselves and either hide the gospel or jam it down another person's throat. The fact of the matter is that many of us have been driving around that highway ourselves for a long time. Sometimes we drive in circles, following every arrow that we can find, checking out the signs and symbols, throwing out question marks of our own. We know what it is like to worship an unknown God because we ourselves have done it, worshiping our jobs, our families, our money, our self-improvement, our self-esteem, our New Age philosophies, our hardcore Orthodox beliefs. But lo and behold, 
somewhere along the highway of life, the good news appeared either as an intentional destination or an exit that we weren't expecting. The outline of God came into focus. In some unexplainable way, we knew. God was no longer an unknown quantity. And the fact that we knew changed our lives. Paul must have understood this, having been a wanderer himself before being struck by a bolt of lightning on the Damascus Road. Instead of hitting the Athenians over the head with evangelistic fervor or running away and hiding our head in, his head in the sand, Paul met them where they were. He affirmed the faith they had, and that was important. And then he spoke the truth as he knew it in love. What therefore you worship as unknown, he said, I proclaim to you. What you do not know, we who are in Christ know. We who are in Christ know at the very core of our beings the presence of God. I invite you to think about that. We may not know exactly how God made us, but we know that God made us. We may not know the prehistory of human evolution, but we know that by God's hand, we all came from one ancestor. We may not know why we as a human family got so separated and disjointed into different peoples in different places around the world, but we know God breathes life into each and every one of us, and that makes us related to each other. We may not know how to solve the world's problems, but we know that God is the God of all of us. Even the pagans in Athens, even the Muslims in the Middle East, even our next door neighbors who've never been to church in their lives. We who follow Jesus know the God who judges us not by force, but by love. We may be broken and sinful, but deep inside us, God has made something inherently good. We may fall far short of the glory of God, but God never gives up drawing all of us, every one of us, no matter who we are or where we are on life's journey, into the divine web of interconnectedness, relationship, and love. We may disobey the highway signs, but God forgives us in that great traffic court in the sky when we finally get it, when we get God's greatest commandment to love this very present and very knowable God with all our hearts and minds and souls and to love our neighbors as ourselves. We may not be able to do this by ourselves, but God empowers us by his spirit to begin in these small and sometimes large ways to reconcile with ourselves and with everyone else because we're all family and we all come from one ancestor seeking, groping, and searching for God. We who are in Christ have the audacity to speak the truth of what we know and what we know is God. I'm guessing that Paul was the perfect person to evangelize the Athenians, knowing so well what it is to worship an unknown God, yet knowing even more deeply what it is to worship the God who's made known to us in Jesus. After all, God took Paul's raw material and made a murderer into a man of faith, an angry bigot into an apostle, and an evildoer into an evangelist who preached the gospel to people far and wide, to foreigners, to outsiders, to people who were never on anybody's radar screen before, 
if God could do this for Paul, surely he would do it for the men of Areopagus. And imagine what he can do for us. God will take us too with all the other highway wanderers in the world and make us into travelers par excellence, into people who may need a map but know the destination, into people who have questions but know without a shadow of a doubt the source of all the answers. In this postmodern world, where it seems like anything goes, it's a gift from God that we know God in the depths of our souls, that we know God because in our heart of hearts, we too, like the people of Athens, seek and grope and search for the divine center of all life. We are most grateful that we have been given, given a name for this God. We've been given a name for this God. And it is God, the creator, redeemer, and sustainer. As we come to know God more by the living presence of the resurrected Christ in our lives, we owe it to our brothers and sisters to speak of what we know with respect, conviction, and love to speak of what we know. Every traveler needs a good guide. And you might just be the one that someone else needs. So get out your compass, your map, and your road signs. And tell the world in word and deed exactly what you know. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Amen.
in the hope and joy of the resurrection, let us pray for the church, the world, and all in need. God, our faithful companion, you promise to never leave us and to send your spirit to guide us in wisdom and truth. Send your people into the world to serve as mirrors that reflect and magnify your love. Hear us, O God. Creator God, all the earth sing praises to you. Grant your care to the creatures, plants, and places that are suffering, and equip us to respond to their song. Make us agents of restoration and refreshment for all your beloved creation. Hear us, O God. Loving God, you sent your spirit to grant us peace. Make your presence known to those who feel abandoned or alone and to all who are sick or troubled in any way. Especially today, we pray for Bill, Steve, Joy, Dee, David, Beth, and Liam. And we pray for those mourning, Catherine, and we pray for the memory of Nora Billings. Hear us, O oh God. Jesus, our Savior, look with favor upon those celebrating birthdays this week. Catherine Hill and Alicia Hall, hear us, O oh God. Caring, Lord, you hold us in your loving care. We pray for mothers and mother figures. Console all who long to be mothers, or children estranged from their mothers, or anyone grieving the death of a mother and mothers who have lost a child. Hear us, O God. Eternal God, enfold us in the great multitude of saints from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages. We remember the saints of the church, Matthias, the apostle, and Eric, king of Sweden, martyr. And we remember with love the saints of peace, Erica Lindsay, Jean Lindsay, Leon Billstone, and Clara Hofer. Hear us, O oh God. Great. Rejoicing in the victory of Christ's resurrection, we lift up our call committee, our search process, and our future minister. We bring our prayers and praise to you, almighty and eternal God, through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. So let us now put aside our differences and our disagreements and pass the peace of Christ with one another. The peace of our Lord be with you always. Peace be with you. I can't read. We come now to that portion of the service where we remember that all that we have comes from God, that what we give is just a portion in return, and we worship God with our tithes and with our offerings.
offering and we ask God to bless these letters which have been written by peace uh, members and attenders to their legislators to ask for legislative action to eradicate hunger. Lord, you are the bread of life. We ask that all of God's people have both spiritual bread and the bread to nourish them every day. Lord, help us to be the expression of your love in the world. Lord, you are merciful. We pray for our elected leaders, especially those in Congress, that your spirit of love and wisdom be shed on them so that all people may be treated with justice and dignity. Lord, help us to be the living image of your mercy in the world. Lord, you are a just God. We ask that you cultivate in each of us the thirst for fighting for those most in need. Lord, help us to speak up for those who cannot make their voices heard. Lord, you have taught us in the gospel to see you in those we serve, saying, I was hungry and you gave me something to eat. Lord, Help us to be steadfast in our efforts to eradicate hunger in our nation. God and creator of all, we ask that your love fill our hearts, guide our actions, and enlighten our minds. We ask this in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord Most High. It is indeed right, our duty and joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, Almighty and merciful God, for the glorious resurrection of our Savior Jesus Christ, the true Paschal Lamb who gave himself to take away our sin, who in dying has destroyed death and in rising has brought us to eternal life. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures, with the angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, 
We praise your name and join their unending hymn. We remember that on the night of betrayal and desertion, Jesus took bread, gave you thanks, broke the bread, and gave it to the disciples saying, this is my body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, Jesus also took the cup after supper saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Therefore, or together, we proclaim the mystery of our faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Consecrate therefore by your Holy Spirit these gifts of bread and wine that they may be for us the body and blood of Christ and bless us that as we receive Christ at this table, we may enter into the mystical union with Christ and one another. We may offer you our faith and praise, and we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. Remembering all your mighty and merciful acts, we break bread and share one cup, giving thanks for your saving love in Jesus Christ. As you raise our Lord from death and call us with him from death to life, we give ourselves to you to live for him in joy and grateful praise. Amen. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and fix our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. To all those who are communing with us at home or using the packets here in the worship hall, I invite you to take your bread. This is my body broken for you. Take and eat. And for all those same who are taking your cup. This is the blood of the new covenant poured out for you. Take and drink. Susan, this is the body of Christ broken for you.
Susan, this is the blood of Christ shed for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. Amen. Communion servers may come forward.
May the Holy Communion of the body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, keep and preserve you, each one, in body, soul, and spirit, into everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious God, in you we live and move and have our being. And with your word and this meal of grace, you have nourished our life together. Strengthen us to show your love and serve the world. In Jesus' name, amen. May the God of all who raised Jesus from the death bless you by the power of the Holy Spirit to live in the new creation. Amen.
Go in peace. Serve the risen one.